Earlier, I spoke with Kentucky Senator Rand Paul about that and much more. Senator, good to see you tonight. So, let's just start. Let's just start quickly with the, the question that I asked him. And I think for you, it'll be relatively easy given your earlier positions. But knowing what we know now, would you have authorized the invasion into Iraq? No, I think the invasion of Iraq was a mistake, and I thought it was a mistake even at the time. And I think it's a mistake for a reason that I think is consistent with a lot of other things that have gone wrong in the Middle East. I think when we've toppled secular strongmen, secular dictators, we've gotten chaos and the rise of radical Islam. So you have Iraq now that's almost like a vassal state for Iran. You have Iranian troops in Iraq. Iran is much stronger now with Hussein gone. So I think really the objective evidence on the ground shows that toppling Hussein made us less safe as a country. Mm -hmm. But also the same applies to Hillary's war in Libya. Toppling Gaddafi made us less safe. Even the president has uh, acknowledged some ownership on that one. And John Bolton has made a similar point to the one you're making, which is the United States may have been better with some of these, better off with some of these dictators in place. But hindsight is 2020. And for you to say that it was a mistake at the time and you would have advocated a different decision at the time is a difference between you and Jeb Bush and, and Chris Christie, too, who came out today and at least said he believes George W. Bush made the best decision he could at the time. You, do you disagree with that? I think it's been a consistent mistake, and if we don't learn from history, we're, we're making a no, another error and we'll continue to make errors. Yes, I think it was a mistake because I think Hussein was a counterbalance to Iran, and even at the time, even if he did have weapons, he had used weapons on his neighbors previously. He had used chemical weapons on his neighbors. So I don't think anybody thought Hussein was a great guy, but he was seen geopolitically as a counterbalance to another nation that is a threat to us in the region and potentially a threat to us here. Our Iran. And I think really, not just in hindsight, but in looking forward at the time, they should have realized that by toppling Hussein, they would have made Iran stronger and made Iran more of a threat. But how can you say that? Because you, you were the one who was out there in 2007 saying you didn't perceive Iran as a threat. So how is George W. Bush back in 2003 supposed to say, let's not invade Iraq because Iran is too much of a threat and it'll, uh, it'll eliminate the counterbalance? Right. I think Iran is definitely more of a threat, so they have become more of a threat in the last seven years. And I think I've never really indicated that they were of no threat, but I think that they were never a direct threat to us seven or eight years ago, whereas now I think they are a direct threat to our country. But that begs the question so about 2003, because you're saying George W. Bush should have foreseen that they were a threat back then. So they were a threat in 2003, but they weren't in 2007, and now they are again in 2015? Well, I would say they were a threat to the instability of the region, and they were a threat to destabilize the region even back then, and have been for a long time. So I think there's a difference or a nuance between threat to destabilizing the region, threat to their neighbors, and a direct threat to us. Let's get back to broader foreign policy, because when I had the following exchange with Jeb Bush, quite frankly, you were, the, you were one of the first people I thought of uh, in terms of the likely reaction. Let me play it for the audience. Do you There's see the, the world as he does? Do you see that in you know, the so-called Bush doctrine? Do you subscribe to it? Our foreign policy ought to be ought to be grounded in not just the export of our own values or nation building. Those are those are good sentiments, but first and foremost in security and peace. Uh, and I think we've what we've seen under this president is as we pulled back, we're creating an incredibly insecure world. Do you agree that, that nation building and exporting our values are good sen sentiments on foreign policy? Well, the interesting thing is Jeb in these comments actually agrees, disagrees with his brother. When George W. ran in 2000, he actually said nation building was a mistake. And I think his views changed after 9-11. But I do think that there is a lot of evidence that we are not very good at creating nations and that when we try to create nations by toppling governments, that really the opposite has happened. How about the, the Patriot Act? Because there's about to, you are reportedly getting ready, uh, perhaps engaged in another long speech of sorts in the Senate, that's what I've heard, on the Patriot Act and, and civil liberties and our, our protections. This has been an ongoing issue in the country, especially since Edward Snowden revealed what he revealed, and I know that you had defended him to some extent, um, and yet the Director of National Intelligence said that he, he endangered us, that he cost us greatly in national security, and so did the then um, his counterpart over at the DIA, said that he, he endangered American troops. So what, what is the point, what, what are you about to do, and how do you respond to those who say that 
that your position endangers security? I think the greatest thing that has endangered our security in the last couple of years was when the director of national intelligence lied to us. Because you need to have trust in your intelligence officers. They have such great power. The intelligence community could do horrific things to invade our privacy, and I think most of the time they don't. But when they lie to us, we lose trust, Which and that could. actually makes did. intelligent gathering worse. In your defense, he did. He did it right on camera. We played it many times, and he said, not wittingly, and, and he did it. But then he came out and said that Snowden called, caused massive historical security damage with what he revealed so even though we might be right. ticked off at Snowden you know we don't want massive massive security damage to the United States right what I would say is that I think you can catch terrorists using the Constitution and that you don't have to give up on the Bill of Rights to catch terrorists I think sometimes our blanket collection of all the records of all Americans has taken our eye off the prize the Boston bombers we were tipped off by the older brother we investigated him but we let our guard down and we didn't know he flew back to Chetnia we didn't know he'd been radicalized further and we weren't spending enough time there I would spend much more effort going after him the guy in Phoenix Simpson we knew about him we had arrested him previously we had probable cause if I were the judge in both of those cases I would have said yes here's a warrant search all their records and then if you come back to me and you say they called five people that are suspicious I'd have given you five more warrants mm -hmm. so I would go as deep as it take takes with a warrant to get information instead of just scooping everything up I would go as deep as it takes into the haystack but I would call a judge first so we protect our civil liberties and protect the Bill of Rights. That was the guy who went to Garland, Texas and tried to execute the people holding the free speech event. Where do you come out on that? Was it purely about free speech or were those folks behaving provocatively or in, and in any way inappropriately? Well, you know, the First Amendment's about protecting speech that we find unacceptable. It's easy to, if I say, oh, I love Megyn Kelly, she's a, a great journalist, that's easy to accept. But if I say something really terrible, that's harder to accept. And, and there are really despicable things that are actually said, and that's the harsh language you have to accept on the First Amendment. However, if I were their parent or their priest or their friend, I would advise you not to trash other people's religion, that doing it gratuitously isn't good for peace, it isn't good for things. Things, but I would defend their right to say so if they want to say obnoxious things. Senator Rand Paul never says obnoxious things, at least not.